This is a video all about the concept of how to solve an equa uh, equation numerically using an iterative method. It's a process that's actually quite simple to do and you would have done at GCSE, but the concept behind how it works I find some students found quite difficult, so that's what this is about. We're also going to see how uh, this leads to cobweb and co uh, staircase diagrams. So the idea is if we've got an equation that's quite difficult to solve, f of x equals to zero, and I'm going to rearrange it so it's in the form of x equals a different function of x. So rather than looking for a value of x that makes this function equal to zero, I'm looking for a diff uh, the same value of x that makes this function equal to x. So if I can find a value of x where this is true, then that will be the same solution to this. Graphically, let's think about what this would look like. Uh, if I draw the graph of y equals x and the graph of y equals g of x on a set of axes, then where they meet will be a solution to this and therefore a solution to the original equation. So I'm just going to draw the graph of y equals x, which looks something like that. The g of x, that's just a, a, a general function, and so I'm just going to mark that on to look something like that. I'm not being specific here, this is just very general. So, the idea is, I am looking for this point where x equals g of x, and therefore f of x equals 0. So this is the value of x that I'm looking for. What is that? So the idea is, we rearrange the equation to look like this, and then I pick a starting value. Now I don't know what the actual answer is going to be, I'm just going to pick a starting value. Let's say I was really inaccurate and this was my starting value over here. I guess this answer here. I'll call it x0 for now. So I guess this x number. You can see obviously I'm wrong. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this x number into my g of x function. So if I substitute that into g of x, I'll get a y value out. But I also know that y has to equal x. So this y value will be equal to my next x value to try. So what I'm going to do, this y value will give me the next x value. So let's have a look. This y value here will give me the x value here. Because y is equal to x. So that gives me my next x value to choose. And then I repeat the process. I substitute x1 into my g of x function. So I substitute this into g of x. And that will give me another y value. And then I think, well actually, y has got to equal x. So this is going to give me another value of x here. So when y is this, go to my graph here, that will mean that x is equal to my next x value here. And then I repeat the process. I substitute this into my g function. I get another value out, another y value, and that's going to be the same thing. Now I hope you can see what's happening here. I, I guessed a completely random value of x to begin with. I did a couple of calculations, and can you see how I'm getting closer and closer to the actual solution? And this is why the iteration process works. Each time I guess a value and substitute it in, what this process does is it gives me some feedback. It says, well, actually, your answer's wrong. This is a better answer to try. So this is completely wrong. Try this one. I substitute that in, and, I get, and the, the formula goes, well, actually, that's wrong. Try this one. And then I do it again and again and again. And eventually, I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to the actual correct solution. So that's the idea. Now, I just want to try and uh, I'm going to repeat that process. But I'm going to draw some lines on um, to demonstrate. So, um, and hopefully that will then make sense why we talk about a staircase or a cobweb diagram. So, I substituted my first value of x0 in here. So, and that gave me the y value out. I then made that equal to x. So I then got this next x value to, choose, to, to use. I substituted that in to my g of x function. I then got my next value of x to pick. So I went to the line y equals x. 
I then substituted that into g of x, and this process keeps on going. And you can see I'm now there at my correct solution. And you can see now why we call this a staircase diagram, because it looks like a staircase. So, that, that's the idea of this, basically. Um, we, we rearrange the equation so it looks like this. I then think about it graphically, and I know the way these this, the line y equals x and the line y equals g of x meet. That's the solution I want. I pick a value of x to start. I draw a line, to a, a vertical line, to my g of x function, which then gives me my next x value to find. So I then draw a horizontal line to my y equals x. Vertical line to the function, horizontal line to y equals x. Vertical line to the function, horizontal line to the g of x, uh, to y equals x. Vertical line to the function, horizontal line to the line y equals x, and so on. Now, I picked the g of x function and I drew it pretty much at random. Let's see what it might look like in a different example. So let's say in this case, um, my g of x looks like that. I've still got the line y equals x. What might it look like now? So I've picked my starting value x0, and I'm going to draw a vertical line to my function, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line to the y equals x. Vertical line to the function, horizontal line to the y equals x. Vertical line to the function, horizontal line to y equals x. Vertical line to the function, horizontal line to the y equals x. And so on. And you can see that actually, again, I get closer and closer and closer to the, to the point here where x equals g of x and therefore f of x equals 0. So when I say get closer and closer and closer, we're saying it converges. My answers converge to one value, the value that I'm looking for. And this is what we call a cobweb diagram, because you can see it looks like a cobweb rather than a staircase. So I've looked at a couple of examples. I've looked at a function that might look like that, and we've seen how it can be a staircase, and it can converge towards an answer. And I've looked at a function that looks like that, and we've seen again how it can converge to an answer. The question then is, will it always work? So again, I've drawn the line y equals x, and I've just drawn a different function here, and I've picked a starting value there. What would happen now? So again, I'm going to start my starting value here, and I'm going to draw a vertical line to the function, a horizontal line to the y equals x. A vertical line to the function, a horizontal line to the y equals x. A vertical line to the function, which this line is going to keep going up and up and up. And I hope you can see here that we get further and further and further away. We actually, remember, this is where they intersect. That's the value of x I'm looking for. But in this case, my staircase goes far and far and far away. It diverges. It goes nowhere near the actual answer that I wanted. So in this case, the iterative process does not work. So it won't always work. It's going to depend on what the function is, the way that you rearrange it, because there will be different ways you can rearrange this equation. There will be different ways that you can have this g of x. So the iterative process depends on how you rearrange it, and it also depends on what starting value you pick. If you, it's rearranged correctly, and if the starting value is correct, then what you find is that you can guess a rough answer to begin with to your solution. It might actually be quite far away from the original answer, but very quickly, with very few calculations, you get a really accurate answer to your answer equation. So, that is the concept behind um, the iterative process. Um, and that's a cobweb diagram, and that's a staircase. Uh, that's a staircase diagram. In both the cobweb and this case, and this staircase, they both converge to an answer, so the iterative process works.
I hope that's made sense. It is quite a complicated concept to get your head around. I hope at the very least you understand the idea about the vertical line to the function, a horizontal line to the y equals x. A vertical line to the function, and a horizontal line to the y equals x. If you understand that, then you can at least draw a staircase diagram, or a cobweb diagram, because um, that's something you may need to do. Anyway, in the next video we'll have a look at a specific example with some functions and some numbers, and um, you'll see how simple the actual process is to do.